All right, so as you're having healthy conversations with your kids, especially if they're a little bit older, they might start to share with you some ideas uh, that go against some of the things that you've been trying to teach them. Uh, some of the things that you've been talking about when it comes to God and the church and Jesus and love and acceptance and um, being a part of God's family and being saved. Well, they've heard all the stories, they've heard the lessons, they've been a part of your family devotionals, and now they come to you and they have some doubts and they have some questions. Man, parents, We've got to practice our no shock face. <laughs> if our kids come to us and say something that's off the wall, like, hey, in class today I heard my teacher say this, or I saw this YouTube video that said this, and it's just absolutely against what you believe at your core in your relationship with God, for us to react in a super negative kind of way, that's a good way to tear down one of those on-ramps to a healthy conversation. So as crazy as whatever your kid might say to you, You've got to just hold a stoic face and not to say that you don't engage, you do engage and you engage with asking questions. Well, where did you hear that? Why do you think that? Where else have you seen that happen? And then you can also, well, ask or interject, well, I've, I've heard this, what do you think about this idea? Or remember that time we talked about that? How did that end up playing out? And asking them questions and letting them think. And, and the main point here is with these doubts and these questions, especially again with your older kids and when it comes to faith, is you've got to let them ask these questions. Two plus decades in youth ministry, I have learned this over and over and over again and I've lived it with my three kids. You've got to let them ask questions and to wonder and to doubt. It is totally okay. They aren't going to be able to own their own faith and to have their own relationship with God if they don't figure it out on their own. And the big piece here that I want you guys to think of as parents is you have to be a part of that conversation. At the beginning of the conversation class, I talk about this idea on how we're the biggest influence in our kids' life. And there's a sociologist out there that has determined and through studies and all kinds of fact finding has figured out that yes, parents, it's up to us. We have the biggest influence in helping shape the religious values and the relationship with God. That's up to us. We have the biggest influence to do that with our kids. So when they come to you with doubts and questions, and they're wondering, if you close them down and you don't engage in the conversation and you just say, nope, 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 that's silly, that's not what we believe, that's not what the Bible says, that's hogwash, we don't have those conversations in this house. If that's what you say, then you are absolutely destroying the on-ramp to having the necessary conversations for them to figure out what their own personal faith is going to look like and how they are going to have a loving relationship with God and how they're going to follow Jesus. You've got to engage in these conversations. You're not going to get their questions answered right away when they first come to you and they blurt out that weird thing that they're thinking or that they're hearing about. Again, it gets back to those 100 one-minute conversations. You already continuously have conversations with your kids. So when they do come to you with those doubts and fears, you practice your no-shock face. You're like, oh, interesting. I'm glad you're thinking about that. Where'd you hear it? Where'd you get it from? Have you thought about this? How does this scripture fit in with that? Did you ever notice how when I handled a situation and I went to God and I did it this way, did you see how that played out with me and my boss or me and, me and your uncle? and asking them questions, getting them to think, and then continuing those conversations. That's where you want to be able to go with your kids because you want them ultimately to have their own loving relationship with God and for them to choose on their own to follow Jesus because they understand how much he loves them. This is another idea or another place also where you can institute the questions journal. I talked about it earlier. It's that idea of having a notebook somewhere in your house uh, where they can write down a question, a theological question, I mean, any kind of question, and you will respond with an answer. And also realize this, your kids might come to you with a question or a doubt. It is totally okay to say to them, wow, great question, I don't know but let's look into it together. And that's where maybe you challenge them, say, hey, why don't you try and look up an answer for that? And I'm gonna look up one too. Or you reach out to us on the, in the parent ministry or reach out to a mentor or somebody else and try and find those answers and give them answers to be able to chew on and to think about. Um, but it is totally okay 
for our kids who love Jesus as a fifth grader to be having questions as a 10th grader because it just means their faith is becoming real. Their faith is becoming their own. Um, so you're okay. Let them have doubts. Let them have questions. Live with them through that and continue to build into those healthy conversations.